Have you ever heard of Arpa Paraguaya music? As you already guessed, it's harp music from Paraguay, but it's a lot more than just a genre. It's extremely important to the national identity of Paraguay, as well as the country's history of independence. Now, I first discovered it because it was some of the most danceable, syncopated music I'd ever heard. But it can also be incredibly moody and dreamy. Not to mention, it's some of the most romantic music you'll ever hear. It's been performed all over the world, not just Latin America, including at the Miss USA pageant in 1985 by Miss Utah. All this, despite the fact the instrument itself is relatively new. And while my channel isn't a historical one, it would be impossible to discuss this music without a brief amount of historical context. Paraguay is one of only two countries in Latin America that are completely landlocked. It's a green, tropical region. After gaining independence from Spain, Paraguay became very isolationist and was extraordinarily self-sufficient. They had one of the largest armies on the continent, but eventually, imperialistic motivations on the parts of Uruguay, Brazil, and Argentina led the countries into a brutal war to take control over Paraguay and the capital city, Asuncion. It was called the War of the Triple Alliance. There's this YouTube channel I follow called Three Minute History that explains it way better than I could. But in general, the common narrative is that Paraguay was the underdog, a lone nation defending its sovereignty against overwhelming invaders. And while that's only true from certain perspectives, in this regard, many people feel that Paraguay and the U.S. share a kind of kinship. Today we honor the heroes of Paraguay. Ugh, n not like that. But it was in this context of us against the world that Paraguay was eager to establish a national identity, to distinguish itself from the rest of South America. Now back to the harp. Following years of Capuchin missionaries attempting to westernize the native Guarani population, the Guarani culture held firm. And to this day, 95% of Paraguay's population identifies as being partially indigenous, which is actually pretty remarkable. This is the only bilingual country in Latin America, perhaps because of the epic resistance of the native Guaranis to the Spanish conquest. Their language permeated our society. And it was the Guaranese people who first began constructing harps, guitars, and violins to be exported to the royal courts of Europe, where they became widely respected for their craftsmanship and woodworking. De empezar a darle los motivos que generalmente usamos de flores. These harps are indeed distinct from Celtic or other harps from Europe. For one, the sound box is a much larger triangular shape, creating a more bombastic sound. The parts of the harp are never glued together or attached in any fixed form. They're fitted to perfection. Paraguayan harps are chromatically unique. And the nylon strings give it a more guitar sound. So jumping forward to the early 20th century, Paraguay found one of its first musical innovators in a man named Jose Asensión Flores. He called the music simply Guarani, and he once stated, the Guarani is from my people, written for and by my people. Here's one of his compositions. It's a newer recording, but the melodies and composition are all his. His leap to fame in the 1920s gave Paraguay a small, but exciting degree of musical identity. But the person who really got things going was this guy, Felix Perez Cardoza, who specifically championed the Paraguayan harp as a soloist instrument. He wrote many of the songs which are now considered arpa Paraguayan standards, which to this day are passed down orally from teacher to student. Here he is making his television debut with his infamous song, Tren Lechero, or Milk Train.
This is a modern day performance of the same song. Something unique to Arpa Paraguaya, in addition to the fact that the music is typically never written down, is that in order to be considered a true master of the genre, you need to put your own spin and flourishes into the music, making it your own. This player, named Sergio Mendez, begins his interpretation by making the harp sound like an oncoming train. This is by far my favorite rendition of Tren Lechero. I could listen to that all day. So the final master I'd like to introduce you to is Alfredo Orlando Ortiz, who basically picked up the baton from Felix Perez as the world's premier harpist. A dashing young fellow when he first began his recording career in the early 70s, Dr. Ortiz is still performing and teaching to this day. In fact, many of the clips and songs I've already shown you are from his vast body of work. He even did a Christmas album. He's also kind of hilarious. One day I was practicing it. I had no idea what I was going to call it. And a lady walked by and he said, wow, that sounds red hot. <laughs> and I thought, hmm, that's a little bit too much. The hot, red, red. So this is merengue rojo, red merengue. Wow, that sounds very hot. But really, Alfredo's passion for teaching the craft to the next generation, and also presenting it to the world, is unsurpassed. And that's basically all I have to say. I first started listening to Arpa Paraguaya because I thought it was the perfect music to smoke to. Sorry, Mom. And then I started appreciating it as the perfect soundtrack music for basically any style of film. There's lots of different ways to appreciate it. And if you're not already sold on this music, I guess it's not for you. But personally, I can't get enough. I've been playing Dr. Ortiz's music for 10 years now, and for me, it's unmatchably beautiful. I find the more I can understand about the historical context of the music, I actually enjoy it more. I'll let the true craftsmen of Arpa Paraguaya have the final word. El comerciante puede encarar de otra manera esto y a lo mejor industrializar. Por eso yo le dije, tal vez nosotros ya no hagamos eso porque queremos seguir haciendo el, el arpa que tenga el mejor sonido del Paraguay, que tenga todo lo que el músico requiere de un instrumento como instrumento, no como cosa para apreciar y entonces probablemente nosotros seguimos artesanalmente y vamos a terminar así.
Creo que en nuestra población somos muy chiquititos, pero creo que debe ser el, el país donde más pistas hay en el mundo. El arpa es la parte más bonita de nuestra tierra. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to support future videos and get them coming out faster, please support me on Patreon. You can find the link in my bio or the video description. Thanks very much.